Hey guys, Brian at Victory 4x4. Today I'm going to show you how to install our Blitz bumper on the third gen Tacoma. Some of the cool features of this bumper it has two three quarter inch shackles you can use for recovery, a 20 inch light bar mount, or you can put in this perforated panel that we have as an option. This bumper comes with or without a tube, depending on what you choose, powder coat or bare. It also has a winch mounting location down here. It's a pretty cool installation, very little cutting. Unlike everyone else who makes you hack the crap out of the front of your truck, we're not going to have you do that. So anyways, let's dive in, get this thing installed. Okay, first guys, I want to talk to you about the factory plastic and what you have going on on the front of your truck. Most companies that make these integrated winch bumpers are asking you to take your Sawzall and just hack the shit out of this, cut all this out, and you can never go back to stock. So one of the cool things that we did is we maintained that original bulge so that you can actually go back and reinstall your factory stuff. There's only one piece that we're gonna be cutting out and it's a plastic, part of the plastic balance that goes on the bottom here. If you ever decide you do wanna go back to stock, all you have to do is either zip tie it in or bolt it in in some way. It's super easy to reinstall. Um, this truck has actually already been cut. This is the one we did the prototyping on. And as you can see, I've got all the stock stuff back on it. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and remove all this stuff so that we can put our badass bumper on it. Okay, so this is the Taco Blitz bumper. And I gave you the backside view of this thing so you can kind of see what we have going on. So essentially this is the guts of the bumper, okay? Right up here we have two tabs. This is to mount a 20 inch single row light bar. And then you have your four and a half by 10 bolt pattern, bottom foot mounted winch, which usually will fit most of your 8,000 pound winch, your 10,000 pound winches. The only thing you can't run on this thing is something with an integrated solenoid. It will hit. So you have to run something like an M8000 or a VR8000, VR10000. You can run a Xeon winch. They do make a controller pack that will relocate that controller pack. That's what you're going to want to do in order to maintain the clearance that we need um, underneath the truck, underneath the bumper, underneath the radiator. So um, our fairly is going to bolt on the front here. And as you can see, our D-rings are tied directly into the mounting. It goes right back to the factory mounting. There's no drilling required on the, fair, on the frame. We're using all factory locations. Um, there are two holes right here that we are going to drill into the plastic on the bottom side to secure where we remove some of that plastic out from underneath. So um, on the subject of the light bar, if you do not want to run a light bar, we do have an option. We have a perforated panel that you can buy separately and it will actually just bolt right in here and cover it up so that you don't have this wide open hole. So once you get this guy installed here, it'll give you a nice clean finished look without having to put a light bar in it. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you get this bumper installed, this is when you're gonna to wanna to install your winch, install your light or your perforated panel. You wanna get all that prepped before you actually put it on the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this in, then we're gonna start on the front end of the truck. Okay, so not all light bars are created equal. You can buy really cheap ones and you can buy really expensive ones. Now here's the thing. Since they're not, all, they're not all the same, some of the cheaper light bars are actually going to be narrower than some of the nicer ones like Baja Designs or Rigid. So what you need to know is that we have 22 and an eighth of an inch. So 22 and one eighth distance between here. If you get a light bar that's a little shorter, you can always just shim it. But if you get anything that's wider than that, you're going to have problems. Um, this is designed to work with like your Rigid and your Baja Designs. The um, cheaper ones are going to be a little narrower. So if you decided to install um, a perforated panel as opposed to a light bar. It's a pretty easy installation. Here's the hardware for it, just 5 16 nuts and bolts and washers. You're gonna take this and you're gonna run the nut on the outside, like so. And the reason that you're putting the nut this way is so that you don't see the bolt and the nut poking out in front of the perforated panel. And then you're gonna install this one on the other side And then you just want to make sure you press it down when you tighten this up and that is in there for good. Okay, so now we're going to get into this front bumper. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this lower valance. It's 11 10 millimeter head bolts and they kind of just go around the perimeter of the truck. Okay, so the lower valance is unbolted. We're going to go ahead and start removing some other stuff. We're going to take off this uh, wow, chin. I don't really know what it is. You can use a flat screwdriver. If you have like a trim tool, you can use that. You're just going to kind of get that sucker in here and pry out. Get your fingers in there and start pulling the clips. And that's how that comes out of there. 
Okay, so this is the lower valence piece that we're actually going to remove. This is the only thing that you're cutting. And you're going to see, we've already cut it for when we did our installation video. So go ahead and cue that cut video. And we're back. Okay, so that's gone. So anyways, what you do is just cut that out of there and this is gonna come right out. This piece is the thing you're gonna to wanna to save. If you ever wanna go back to stock, you have to reattach this in some way. The easiest thing to do would be drill a hole here, drill a hole here, put a couple zip ties in it. All it's doing is um, holding the bottom in of this splash here. Um, and when everything's back together, you won't see any of it at all. So make sure you retain this if you ever wanna go back to stock. So I got that out of the way. Now we can go ahead and start working our way to pull this sucker out of the way. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we can go ahead and pull this splash guard out of the way, something else. You're gonna to wanna to retain this if you wanna go back to stock. Okay, so now we're underneath here. We have this crash bar and we have this weird little clippy boy thing on here and there are some clips on the side here. You just press those, press them in as you work your way down the truck. And that comes off. Okay, so this is your aluminum crash bar. And this is the next thing that's gonna come out of here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove these. And then that guy is going to pull out. One thing to note, there are a couple brackets that are attached to it. Um, they go back and they mount to the back side of your plastic here. Now you gotta make sure that you go over here and kind of pop these caps out like that. Now this one, we had to drill the rivets out when we did the original installation and prototyping, but this is actually riveted onto the crossbar in place over here that will come out, you kind of have to just fish it like that. See how it's attached? This one we took out during prototyping, but it essentially goes on there like that. So when you have them both in there, when you take this off, you kind of have to fish it around and you'll get it out. If you don't want to waste a lot of time, you can drill a couple of the pop rivets out and pull it out like this. Okay. Next thing we want to do is we're going to remove these aluminum standoff blocks from the crash bar. Same 14 millimeter. And you pull out your box. Other block. So we have all of the bumper stuff out of the way. Now we need to remove these little blocks here. So there's one bolt here, and then this little toe point, which has two bolts and a third one here. We're gonna remove all that. These are gonna slide out of the frame. We don't need those anymore. And they slide out just like that. and that comes out there. So now we need to move this cooler back to make room for all the accessories we're gonna put inside this bumper. We do not want the winch to touch this cooler, so we're gonna move it back. These are the brackets we include with the bumper. There's three of them. We're gonna move back here, here, and then on the inside of the wheel well on the other side out here, we're gonna be able to move this thing back just over an inch. That'll give clearance for the winch and everything else to fit. It also gives clearance for this thing not to interfere with anything else. So using a 12 millimeter socket, there's two you got one on each side here, so there's this bracket here. And then you can pull that up. Pull that bolt out and see how that comes loose. Same thing on this side. And 
pull that out. And you want to retain these bolts. We're going to use them again in a minute. Okay, so we're going to remove this flap so we can get access to the last bolt that's going to be holding that, that cooler in. So you're just going to kind of grab the around the thing and just kind of pull back and they just kind of pop out like that. And you'll see our bolt right there. So now, 12 millimeter socket. Go ahead and remove that one. And now our line can move freely. All right, so now we're gonna install this bracket moving it backwards. So you can see I'm running the button head bolt up and then this one's gonna go back into the factory location. First, we're gonna bolt this line on like this. Then we're gonna take the factory bolt and put it back in its location like so. Like that. And now you want it to come straight back. Okay, and I'm gonna leave, leave this loose until I can get the front ones installed. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to install the factory bolt first, just like this, we're moving it up and back. And it's gonna install here, Other one will go on the other side, same way. So straight back, pointing straight back at the back of the truck. Go ahead and tighten these up. Now using our hardware, you can go ahead and And now, go ahead and tighten everything up. All right, so the factory nuts that we removed earlier from here, six of them, we're gonna need those to reinstall our bumper. So got them here. I don't have a friend with me, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this jack to get this bumper up here. Basically, just gonna lift it up into place. Real quick, one more note on the bumper. If you do intend to go back to stock, our bumper goes over this plastic here. So you're going to wanna put something along the edge of the bumper or along the edge of this, of this balance here whether it's like a 3M tape or something, just trying to keep the bumper and the plastic from ever rubbing against each other. Because all the vibrations, wheeling, all that stuff, it's bound to have some sort of contact with the bumper. So make sure you plan ahead. Otherwise, when you go to take this off and go back to stock, even though that's super lame, you may end up with some scratches in your paint, which would also be super lame. So anyways, with that being said, let's put a bumper on. Now with it up in place, grab your nuts and get them started on here. Okay, to get to the inside ones, you're gonna have to just kind of pull this plastic down, push your hand up in here, and get those started. Okay, I have the six bolts in, I don't have them tight. I still have them loose so I can kind of move the bumper back and forth if I need to. You just want to make sure you have an even gap all the way around here, 
all around the top and around the side here. And if you're all good to go, you can tighten everything up. We do have two more bolts that we're going to be installing, which are down here into this factory cross member. So we're using the half inch bolts provided. We're gonna bolt these in. So we have a bolt washer flange nut. Flange nut goes right inside here. This guy's gonna come up. Let me go ahead and tighten that up. It went in on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Three quarter inch socket. And that's the beauty of a flange nut. You don't need to hold the other side of the nut. It actually grips and holds itself. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool that we're using those, huh? Okay. Now we're gonna tighten up the bolts inside for the bumper. 14 millimeter socket. Helps if you have a mid or a deep well socket to get it on there and a long enough extension. Otherwise you can reach your hand in there. Go ahead and crank these down both sides. All right, so next we're gonna tighten these up. So I'm just pulling this out of the way to show you. Same thing, 14 millimeter socket. You're gonna have to kind of reach your hand up in here and tighten them up. Okay, got that side tight. Now we're gonna tighten this side up. Now we just need to secure all this and we are done. All right, so use the long one that came out. That was the one that came out out here, here. And we're gonna wanna put that back in there. This little thing snaps in here like so. And we're gonna line that back up here. Then we're going to drill a hole here and put in our bolt that's going to secure the rest of that. And that's a 5 16 hole that our bolt provided through here with the flange on top. A 3 16 Allen. We're going to go ahead and tighten that guy up. And now all that's secure. Okay, so that wraps up the installation of the Blitz bumper on the third gen Tacoma. As you can see, it was a pretty easy installation. It took me about an hour and a half while shooting the video. So if I were you, I would uh, probably plan for about two and a half to three hours since you know I was pretty familiar with how this went together. So anyways, as you can see, it makes the truck look super aggressive and super cool. So if it's not already in your build journal, add it. Add it now, get this done. Keep your eye open for more Tacoma parts from Victory 4x4. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Info at victory4x4.com or 269-353-1184. We'd be happy to help. See you on the trail, my friends. Bam!